So I stayed home that summer and I just worked like two, three times a week on industrial films. I made a million of them, you know. I did one, I, re I worked so much, I remember I made one, I'll never forget this one, I on Wednesday, on some Wednesday, I worked for General Motors on an industrial film explaining how shitty the United Auto Workers were and not to basically don't trust those snake-eyed bastards. And then on Friday, I made one for the United Auto Workers explaining <laughs> how shitty GM was to them and how not to trust those snake-eyed bastards. Please give it up for Mr. Ted Ramey. You could do better than that. First Q&A of the day. Give it up. Yes. Yeah, All right, you? have a grab a microphone. Let's hang out. Light. It's like a. I can get you a heavier target. one. Target. <laughs> it's real, honest. Right. Okay. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Are you having a good time? Like in all the whatever forty minutes this convention has been going. On? <laughs> you know, you're at a great advantaged position, and that's because not because I'm up here. I'm going to waste your time horrifically, but. <laughs> You're in an advantage position because you all still have most of the money you came with. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? You did. Okay, why, what did you spend it on? Did you just go to like the, the first vendor you saw and then handed them your wallet and said, give me everything? What happened? And that was all of your money? <laughs> Do you have enough to pay your rent? So go on, brag some more, why don't you? <laughs> How's your Mercedes? Is that looking good, or did you forget to wash it today, or something like that? Good job. Okay. All right. Okay. She goes, that's because I own the goddamn company. <laughs> why else would I drive? It's free. Um, so raise your hand if you're here to get celebrity autographs. Yeah, like half of you. The rest of you guys are like, yeah, I don't really give a shit about autographs. <laughs> I don't really care. Okay, for those who didn't raise their hands, tell me why are you here? Raise your hand if you did not raise your hand before. Yes, miss. Okay, hey, we, have, we have a guy with Kyle. He's got a microphone. He's going to come out. So this way. Go, Kyle. Go, Kyle. There we go. Okay, that's Kyle. Great. Thank you, Kyle. All right, great. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Honestly, because it's been so long since I've seen you, I just wanted to catch up on what you've been doing. Oh, nice. how nice. What's your name, dear? I'm Danielle. Danielle, it's so nice. Well, hold on a second. Give Danielle, let Danielle have the, quit taking the mic away from Danielle. <laughs> God, this guy's like, give me that mic back. <laughs> Jeez, what do you she can do? All right. So, Danielle, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good, because I figure if you're going to catch up with me, I want to catch up with you. <laughs> what, what did you do today? Had breakfast. What did you eat? Eggs and French toast. All right, good. We're all caught up now. Yes, we are. We're good. <laughs> Um, so I'm here uh, for this rather short time this time to answer any questions you guys might have. God, that Xena thing really brought back some fucking memories. Of <laughs> Jesus. All right. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, literally 30 years later, TV shows, movies, video games, they <laughs> play that. <laughs> it's a great clip. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, uh, who has a question for me? Does anybody have... I'm oh, sorry, did you want to do your schmooze? No, no, here? you do your thing and I'll punch in whatever you need me. All right, great. So who, uh, who else got questions? None. Okay, let's get the hell out of here. No, no, there let's we go. Online. Right down the middle. Sir. Right down there, we got some. Yes. Look at him. He's really moving around <laughs> fast. This guy's like... Lightning. How you doing? Welcome I'm, back. Thank you. Thank you. Last time I met you was when we had the Pittsburgh Comic Con over at the other building. Oh. Uh, I have a picture that I will show you later. Damn. When. No, I don't want to see it. It probably will look like 20 years younger. I don't want to look at that. Shit. It was depressing. Um, but I believe you. Yeah, you know, my question is, how much uh, rehearsal or singing did you have to do for Xena? I know you did, had some musical episodes. Did you practice a lot or... Were you singing is something that you already did, and they said, oh, I can sing, you know. You mean, did I already know the songs before I rehearsed them? Were you a singer, like, were you a singer doing, 
before you got the show. No, no, but I could do some singing, like I something I, I'm old school, right? I'm in an old school actor like myself. You're expected to sing a little bit, dance a little bit, and mostly act. That's kind of the bag, you know. Now they don't do that. They don't stage train and stuff. I mean, that's for better and for worse, whatever. I'm not judging, but it's just kind of the way things are. So if any actor, I'm kind of the last generation of that, you know, that kind of knows a little bit of, of doing those things. So, yeah, so a little bit I could do. Yes. Anybody else? How's everyone doing? Is everyone having a good time? Hey, I know yeah. you guys. I just saw you. Is everyone having a good time so far? Or are you? Yes, buddy. What can I do for you? Yes, you're just having a good time. You have no question. You have just no question. Yes. All right. Okay, All good. Right. We have Sounds a microphone good. coming up to you. You're looking very kind of Pittsburgh cash there. I'm liking yeah, it. Yeah, I've got a presentation. I like it a lot. Doing a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, so are you from Michigan? Sure am. Yeah. Where'd you go to school? I went to, well, you mean uh, college? Yeah. All over the friggin' place. Every place I got kicked out of, I went to a new one. Yeah, I just wondered if you were Michigan State. I went all over the place. Well, yeah, I I went to school at, uh, oh, God, where did I go? First of all, I almost flunked out of high school. (laughs) Anybody here almost (laughs) flunked out of high school? They're like, no, you're the only idiot in the room, Ted. You did. You almost flunked out of high school. Really? Why'd you flunk out of high school? No. I I didn't go a lot, so... That'll do it. That'll do it. Um, I was just sort of more interested in doing everything else, so I didn't really study. And, and then, um, and, and so I, had, I went to a community college. It was called Oakland Community College, which we called One Chance College, because it really was the only chance left. From there went Michigan State, which was like kind of hell. Everyone was like drinking beer. I, don't, I hate beer. I drink booze, and that wasn't the place to drink booze. So um, I'm not saying I'm not a lover of alcohol. I'm just saying I don't drink beer. That's all. Um, and then after that, I went to, uh, where did I go? New York University. That was ridiculous. Don't go to New York, New York University. Anybody here want to be an actor? Good. Don't. <laughs> Great. That's a big, big relief. Go to sleep <laughs> knowing that no one's life is going to be destroyed at some point. <laughs> um, and then from there, I went to the University of Detroit, which is where I got all the good theater knowledge I ever got in my life. And I credit that school with giving me the career that I did, because I would have never been able to do what I have done without a solid background in uh, doing that, you know. Because what they would do at the University of Detroit, like what they wouldn't do at other schools, other schools are like this. Hi, I want to audition for this play. Okay, so are you a graduate student? Well, no, but I think I... Bye, thanks. You know, it's all very hierarchical. And in the real world, as we all know, it doesn't work like that. School is just setting you up for failure in that regard. But U of D, they would force you to audition with professionals. So you're paying stupid amounts of money to go to the school, but you're losing parts to pros. And what does that make you do? You get better. Or you don't get parts. And that's what the world was like. So it was awesome. That's what I did. All right. Who else? Anybody have a question? Yes. Far on the far end. Look at this guy, man. He's uh, like... He's on fire. God. He's going to be 12 pounds. I wish, I wish he, if he was a barista, I'd tip him 50 bucks because they're so fast. Yes. yes. Uh, Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> Ted, uh, we just saw a lot of Pratt Falls you did in Xena. And, of course, making Evil Dead 2 with your brother. Were you, have you ever been injured uh, making a film or a movie? Yes, of course I have. <laughs> All the time. But, you know, I mean, I like throwing myself around. I like doing stunt work. I mean, whatever the stunt guys will let me do, I like to do it. And some actors are kind of wired that way. Some are not. It's just like anybody, you know. Some people like to do sports. I don't like sports at all. I don't like any of them, except boxing. I think it's cool. But I do like to take tumbles and do hits and stuff. And anything the stunt guys will let me do, I'll do, you know. I still do it. You know, it's crazy. Like I just, um, you know, I remember just uh, a couple of years ago, I was making a video game called The Quarry for Supermassive Games. <clears throat> and uh, there's a lot of stuff in there where my character, who's this cop, gets beaten up and, you know, uh, attacked by werewolves and all kinds of stuff. And I wanted to do a bunch of that stuff. And they were like, no. no. I'm like, why? Because we need you for tomorrow. And, you know. We don't want you in the hospital, so yeah, so you know, they don't, sort of don't let you. But yeah, you know, I like I like doing that kind of stuff. 
Uh, so who else? Anybody? I do. Me? Yes, you. Uh, uh, no, we don't care about you. All right, with it. No, yes, all please, right, go ahead. No, go no ahead. I was going to ask you about the whole thing with the fake Shemp. Did that come about, that term from you or your brother, and obviously based on Shemp Howard of the Three Stooges, and did you kind of put any Shemp into your uh, Joxer character? I saw a couple good, oh, oh. Okay, well, first of all, let's define that sucker. That is a term, for those who don't know, that was just seen in a, in a, on a credit roll during some of the Evil Dead movies and other films that uh, Renaissance Pictures has made. And what that is, is a, we, we used to jokingly, we, we all, all of us love this mic sucks. No, that's good. What? Okay, okay, it's sort of weirdly solved. Okay, so um, we watch a lot of Three Stooges. We love them. But as you watch chron chronologically, as you do when you're a big nerd, you know, watching the Three Stooges, like, who the hell watches the Three Stooges chronologically? It makes no sense at all. But uh, we would. And then as Shemp got older, he would have to be doubled because he just got too old to do his own stunts. And that double was the worst double in the world. Like, it was hilarious to watch. He would just cover his face like this as he ran into walls. I mean, it was just absolutely dreadful. Um, so we would call people that are just, you know, the guys that would help out in a kind manner, fake shemps, because they weren't the real ones. Uh, talented, but not all maybe there. So that's where that came from. Yeah. And what is there, I don't know what you mean by is there any of that. I thought I was all there in Xena, but, you know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, actually, no, it wasn't really. I mean, my mind was back in Los Angeles. <laughs> show. I don't think I was quite all there, but I had a nice time making that show. Lucy Lawless and Renee O'Connor are awesome. They're just awesome people and incredibly talented actors, so that made it all kind of, uh, kind of nice and easy. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, a couple more, if you don't mind. No, 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 no. Uh, you started out as a DJ, right? Uh, no, I had a job briefly at a radio station as a DJ. That, I don't know where that kind of that got around, but I well, What didn't really... kind of thing did you do? <sighs> you know, I worked for this local radio station yeah. doing stuff, and they allowed me on the air for like 10 minutes. They were like, thanks, bye. And that didn't really work out so well. well so on air, somewhat personality. Yeah, good way to put it. More like, yeah. like quick fire. It's more like the way I would put it. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else? Yeah. I was going to ask, what about your upbringing that brought you okay. and your brothers to into the film industry? Well, I can't speak for my, my brother, but uh, <clears throat> um, I, came around, I came to acting obliquely. And, I, and what I mean to say is, <clears throat> if I'm sure if you would put any other of these very fine and talented actors who are here today up here, they would tell you, most of them anyway, <clears throat> they had a bug. You know, they like, I had to do it. Right? I, had to, I didn't care what anyone said. I had to do it. I had to do it. I really didn't have that when I started at all. Um, I'm from Detroit. You know, it's very much like Pittsburgh. You just, you do what you think you can make a living at, right? That's what we do and where we live in this part of the world. And um, so, so I had shitty jobs when I was a kid, when I was 17 and 16. I was a dishwasher. I was a bus boy. Um, I was a golf caddy. And I wouldn't wish that last job on my worst fucking enemy. It was what a nightmare that was. You, know, you get these guys, these guys. I never forget every day in the middle of you know Michigan boiling summers. These guys with you know they got the guts out to hear a little cigar in their mouth, hair all slicked back. God damn it, kid, move that fucking tear. I'll fucking lay you out with it. You know, like all day, all day, all day. That was just you know you know thirty cents for a tip. <laughs> Guy still thinks he's living in 1930. You know, like they tip me like 50 bucks or something. Don't spend it all in one place. Yeah, I'll try and buy not one tenth of a Snickers bar with that. Thanks. <laughs> um, so that sucked. Anyway, then I had another kind of crappy job as a production assistant for this local uh, filmmaking company, just by chance. You know, it just kind of moved around from one because when you're directionless, you know that's what happens to you. You move from these kind of crappy jobs. And the next stop for me was prison, if I hadn't been careful. So um, I'm working, sweeping floors, driving, picking up stuff. And uh, some guy who was another production assistant said, you know, you ought to audition, audition for one of these things because you're pretty goofy and weird. I was like, thanks. Like, okay. 
And uh, I was like, well, I don't know if I want to do that. Like, I don't know how to be an actor because, you know, I'm like a 17-year-old kid. I'm not really sure. And uh, I'd done a few plays, but I was like, all right. So I went in and I read for this uh, industrial film. And incidentally, you guys know what an industrial film is? Yeah. So they're mo- for those who don't, they're movies, in-house movies made for that company. So like, how to fold shirts if you work at the Gap, right? You know, um, how to take tickets if you work here at Pittsburgh Comic Con, stuff like that. So Detroit, an industrial town just like this is, has a million of them, you know, Ford, GM, Chrysler. So when I read, I read and uh, I got the part. And I, I had the job that next Wednesday, so I go in. I do the bit. <clears throat> it was the easiest thing to do. Um, I had a great time doing it. The day ended at 1 o'clock for me. I was like, what? 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 I was driving home at 1.30. I was like, well, okay, whatever. So that was kind of interesting, ridiculous. And then I got a check two days later, and that was worth three weeks of washing dishes. And I'm like, welp, I guess I found the thing I'm doing. And it was just like that. So I stayed home that summer, and I just worked like two, three times a week on industrial films. I made a million of them, you know. I did one. I, re- I worked so much. I remember I made one. I'll never forget this one. I mean, on Wednesday, on some Wednesday, I worked for General Motors on an industrial film explaining how shitty the United Auto Workers were. How not to basically don't trust those snake-eyed bastards. And then on Friday, I made one for the United Auto Workers explaining... <laughs> How shitty GM was to them, and how not to trust those Nick and bastards. <clears throat> it was awesome. Like, I was a true whore. I just couldn't care less. Whoever paid me, I was like, this is a great job, man. I can, doesn't matter what side you're on, no, everybody will forgive you. <laughs> so it was great, you know, and I just kind of went on from there. So it was a completely practical, and I didn't wind up loving acting until I was probably 23 or 24, like about five years later. You know, I was just making a living at it, doing fine. And then I was like, all right, I guess I better go to school for this stuff. Because, you know, refine myself. So what was the first thing outside of the industrial thing that you said, this is really, uh, this is really for me? After all the industrial stuff, the one thing that bit you? Uh, it's a good question. I did a feature movie, uh, my first... I only starred in three movies in my entire life, but, you know, most of the time I'm a character actor, of course. So I did, um, I did um, a feature film called Lunatics, A Love Story, starring me and Deborah Foreman, who I suppose is most famous for a movie called Valley Girl. You may, for those of you who may know classic films, she's the star of that. So Deborah and I were in this movie together where I'm this uh, agoraphobic who doesn't go outside, and that, and showing the mental illness back in 1991 <clears throat> was very unusual. Now, of course, it's quite common, and in fact, you shouldn't make fun of it. But we were almost making fun of him. Um, and uh, he, on a random, he gets a random phone call from a girl who dialed the wrong number, which happened in those days before cell phones. And um, she says, "Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles, and I thought I was calling this person, and." But Hank, this character, is so excited to get a call from anybody because he hasn't spoken to another person in months. He invites her over, and this starts a romance, and she's crazier than he is. So it's kind of like, the, you know, it's kind of a nice theme that they, there's someone for you in this world. That's kind of right. nice. That one, that one did it. I think I was like, yeah, I really love this. So, so can I ask a bit about Evil Dead? Sure. Ask How, away. Was it as much fun to make as it was for us to watch? No. <laughs> Fucking difficult as hell. But, you know, I, you know the, the expression that is true that I've heard is easy to make, hard to watch. Uh, how many DVD extras have we all seen of a movie that's kind of shitty, you know, that the actors go, I just don't get it. We were having such a great time. I don't know why this isn't selling. I mean, we were laughing the whole time. Yeah, dumb fuck. That's why it sucks. Right. You do any of that with anything you do that is going to reek and be bad. So, yeah, you have you have now if you have a really difficult time making it doesn't mean it's going to be good, but it certainly won't if you're if you're having a good time. So, no, it was difficult to make. But but they but very fortunately, you know, kind of the gods do come together and kind of, you know, give you some good luck sometimes. And they, they all turned out quite well, I thought. Was there much of a premiere for that in theaters when that came out? It just kind of snuck out. I don't remember, out dude. I was 12. Are you kidding me? You might as well ask me about what bubblegum I chewed. Then. What bubblegum no do you chew? 
<laughs> Bazooka. Good answer. My favorite. I buy it by the bucket. I'm that guy. You ever wonder who buys the buckets <laughs> like at Costco? That's me. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, yes. Anybody else? Sir. Question over there. Right now, right Miss. There. Yes. Um, I'm a big fan of the quarry. I was oh, thank just you. wondering how it was different from regular acting, if it was more difficult, what your experience was. That's a really good question. So, so for those who don't know, those who don't know, The Quarry is a uh, horror video game uh, produced by Supermassive Games in London, England, and uh, it's part of what they call their uh, Dark Pictures series, and they all look rather similar and spooky, and that particular one was written and directed, sorry, co-written and directed by um, Will Biles, who's an excellent director, um, looked gorgeous, and um, in answer to your question, so I'm, I'm a police officer in that one as a cop. And now I've totally forgotten your question. What does it have been yammering down so long? What you want to? How was the experience of doing the like facial stuff right. different than regular acting? Yeah, it's in a, yeah, sorry. So that was shot in motion capture, which means that you are basically fed into a computer. You're, all your body mo motions, your face, every superhero movie you've seen with the bad guy um, has been done this way. Although in this case, it's different because it's actually me. They're not transmorphing me into any other creature. It's just me. Um, so that was unusual. The other thing was because the environment is put after you do the acting, um, there's no props, there's no set pieces, there's no camera department. And so there's no dollies, grips, gaffers, lighting people, electricians. There's just you and the director and the other actors. And because of that, it feels like this intimate New York black box theater vibe as an actor. You know, you really do feel like it's just, you're rehearsing. And because of that, we really kind of felt free to do some crazy stuff. You know, like it was like, it just felt like a rehearsal for a play. And I think, and partly I think that's why that acting, if I may say, turned out quite well. Not, not only mine, I was very blessed that I think that performance turned out well, but um, that my co-stars, you know, Siobhan Williams, Skylar Gazondo, and Lynn Shea, and uh, Lance Henriksen, you know, we, I think we all jive really well because of that. So, yeah, different because of that. Uh, anybody else? Yes, you with the, the, the dangerous, bloody staff. I love this guy. Look at oh, this we'll, psycho. We'll get you next. We'll get him next. Oh, all right. Oh, yes. Uh, when you worked on Xena, do you have any, like, specific scenes that were your favorite to shoot? <sighs> I just don't remember, man. Like 30 years ago. I don't know. I mean, I remember <laughs> lunch. <laughs> lunch is my favorite part of the day. It's also my favorite word on set. And people call it lunch. I'm like, what? I'm like a dog. Like, where? What? what? Um, and that's because, you know, I was broke for so long. You know, I couldn't believe the game's free food, what which about? is standard for actors, and they love free food. What about don't let an actor into your home. <laughs> They're not going to steal anything valuable like watches, but if you leave an actor alone in your home, your fridge will be emptied out. I swear, it's like, don't do it. It's like, it's like having a Rottweiler and leaving your door, fridge door open. It's like, ah, now. I'm sorry, go on. What about working with Lucy or uh, Renee? I loved working with them. They were both great. Um, <clears throat> they were breaths of fresh air um, because um, neither one of them was a big major star yet. And so um, it was wonderful to work with them. They had no illusions. They were all about the acting, and uh, uh, they were very lovely people to work with. Um, one other thing about working on that show I do remember is we were the number one, at that, at that time for like almost six solid years, we were the number one syndicated show in America. We were on NBC and USA Network. But they didn't play it in New Zealand yet. It didn't get there. So if I would go back to L.A., I'd be like, ooh, ah, 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 you know. But that was like for five minutes. And then I go back to New Zealand, they're like, you know, I don't know who you are, mate. Yeah? You want a burger or not, mate? You know, they don't really care. So that was kind of refreshing. And in that, because of that, um, none of us ever felt like we had a hit show. None of us did. So we would all 
work our asses off, I think. I mean, of course, I cannot speak for Lucy or Renee, but I know I would work my ass off because I'd be like, shit, I hope somebody likes this. It was like you're doing a pilot every single time. You don't know if the show's going to go, which wasn't true. This was year five. I'd already done whatever, 55, 60 episodes and still had the vibe of, I hope people like it because no one knows about the show, you know. So I think that gave it a lot more energy as the typically as shows progress, the actors get more complacent. It's like a cat. You just keep feeding it. It'll just keep eating and be like, like, hey, kitty, I brought you food. I don't fucking care. You know, cats just don't give a crap because you just feed them so much. But you have a cat that's starving. It's going, its eyes are like this. Its tail's wagging. It wants to, you know, something like that. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it's got to go yeah, with the microphone. That, yeah, uh, sorry, that. bloody. Let's stand up for a second, man. What the hell? That's awesome. Did you just like spear a deer? Like what's going on over there? Uh, yeah, I hit a deer on the way up here, so I had to take care of it. Good thing is, though, I'm going to have meat throughout the whole winter. Yeah, man. The question is, good job. Did you, did you take care of the head or just did you get the good flank? You know, I just I got it right in the neck, so it was just perfect. The yeah. whole rest of the body is in good condition. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I love this guy. Okay. Yes. So I'm a, I'm a filmmaker myself. All I'm right. Just breaking out into the industry. All and right. I love trading stories with people. So All right. My question for you is, sir, do you remember your longest day on set and what production it was? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, I do. I was the longest day I ever spent on set. I did a 20, 20 sorry, a 30 hour day. I did a 30 hour day. So, and I remember, so when you are doing television, Saturdays and Sundays are almost exclusively not work days. Because of that, and because of the schedules and because there's whole new casts and crews coming for the next episode, which frequently happen on a Monday, and TV shows are often 10 days to shoot, the last Friday, they have to get everything in or they just don't get that episode. So they'll sometimes go to midnight or one, right? And when it goes past midnight, we call that in the business frater day, which is another word for your weekend's fucked. Friday into Saturday. Because you're, so this time I worked from like 7 a.m., I remember on a Friday, to it was something like noon on Saturday. I didn't even know what I was doing there at like 11 a.m. the next day. No idea. I just, I don't even think I remember it. I was like, where, what, you know, I, I mean, how many cups of espresso can you have, you know? So, yeah, I'm longest day. Good question. And what about you as a filmmaker? What's your longest day? Um, oh, man. So the longest day I think I had on set, if you can count it, because it was for a contest. It was uncountable? It was that, that long? I was like, I don't remember. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm very picky with how I count things, but it was for a 48-hour film fest, so we were... Cool! I was up for most of those two days. I got a short little nap in there. But what was, was your movie about? How long was it? So it was a little over six minutes. Um, it was That's called, a lot to shoot in just a few hours. It was, but it was... It was I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a sadist, so I love being on a difficult film set. I'll say you are. Jesus, um, buddy. <laughs> Hit yourself on a, when you got home from the shoot. Did you just hit yourself with a pan a few yeah, times? Yeah, just a couple times. Is that the kind of guy out, you are, you know. Uh, so I think the longest time on that was probably close to thirty hours, uh, just on set or, or getting things together and then actually shooting. Jesus but Christ! It was crew called, must have hated you. Oh no, nah, we were all good pals. So oh, uh, good. we they didn't were, hate each were, other you mean much. were, <laughs> were. Well, let's just say not all of us made it out of there alive. <laughs> good man. Good Thanks. stuff. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, sir. Can we do him. Yeah, yeah this guy over here with we that gotcha. with the cap. I love the I like the goatee and the cap. Thank oh, you. Oh, oh, you look very good, Monsieur. Oui, oui. Uh, so I'm a longtime Evil Dead fan. All long right. Longtime horror fan in general. Yeah. And I may be wrong on my count, but you have been a deadite give or take four times. Shit, I don't know, man. I think, including a video game, I think it's four times. Okay. With the uh, new Evil Deads coming out and the new brands of horror. Are we going to see another Ted Raimi return? Oh, who the hell knows? I don't know. I hope so. But I have no idea. You know, See I'm a fifth, fifth uh, Deadite? Uh, possibly. That is entirely possible. You know, um, 
It depends on a couple of things. Um, if they feel like it. And then if they do, uh, if, you know, I think they're still thinking that they're going to probably pay me the fee they paid me 20 years ago. And if that's the case, then probably not. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it just depends. But I love the franchise. Yes, who else? Uh, Actually, we got one back here. Back there. Where's back? I don't oh, even see you, just, dude. Where I are you? I oh. was just wondering when you were talking about you those go. days when you filmed six minutes a day. Uh, when you television, wouldn't that be your normal output? I'm sorry, the mic sucked wouldn't so bad that, that I couldn't hear you. Please. Wouldn't six minutes in a day be about your normal output? Oh, good question. You mean for shooting? Yeah. That, that's a really good question. Um, six minutes in a day. Uh, well, normal, it's a good question. Normal depends on your budget. So normal depends on your budget. That means if you are shooting, like if I'm in Spider-Man 2, right, when I was shooting Spider-Man 2, six minutes is an absurd amount. They would never get that. So in a movie with that kind of a budget, they're probably getting a half or two, up to minimum a half, but no more than two pages a day. That's a lot, probably more like a page a day. Um, on, on a television show, if it's a drama, like whatever, if you're watching TV and you're watching whatever, The Rookie or whatever you like to watch, I don't know. Um, if it's just drama, like actors going, now look, Inspector, we got a body over here. I'll take care of it. No, 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 you can't because you're too good looking and you can't take care of it. But you, Janice, I want you to take care of it. I'm a rookie too, but it doesn't matter. I want you on the scene. So that stuff is probably like eight or nine pages a day because it's just dialogue. It's just actors standing in semicircles talking. Nothing to say anything wrong with that. Lord only knows if you're an actor in one of those, it buys you a fucking house. But, but that is... That's that. Now, if you're all the way to the low budget end, where like your movie costs under a million dollars, you better pray you're getting at least six pages a day. Yeah. So yeah, just depends. Yeah. Well, then this leads me to my question about the, your latest film, Failure. Now, that was shot in one 90-minute take. Am I right with that? That's correct, and yeah. So let's talk about how challenging that was. And was Alfred Hitchcock's rope uh, inspiration for that? Because that was also a single take. It was. Um, uh, we, yeah, so that, now, rope, well, first of all, you're close, but, like, rope is technically four shots, maybe even five, but it's meant out. to look like one, so camera skillfully in that movie, and in other ones that you may think, like, Christopher Nolan is a very famous example, modern example of that, it's really not one single take. You, if you notice, the camera may skillfully move into black and then move out of black, and there is a hidden cut in there, et cetera, et cetera. But in this particular instance, it's really done in one take. So we would start at page one, and it's about a minute a page, roughly, and go to page 93. And if we goofed, we'd have to go back to page one. So that was challenging. So yeah, it was really it was quite difficult. But what it does for the audience is it gives the audience a sense of real-time drama that it, one can only usually get in a play. Right? When you're watching a play, it might suck and be boring, which it usually is. As Milton Berle said, nothing lasts forever except a bad play. But this case, you're watching this actor and you understand that they're not cutting and you sort of get the sense of, well, if this guy messes up, if a line gets thrown, if an actor does something wrong, if a prop doesn't get picked up, I'm going to see it. And you do. You do. And we all kind of would fuck up from time to time as you do during an hour and a half. No play you see, have ever seen it doesn't have a mess up. But we, of course we did. So... But you have to kind of get good about kind of getting yourself out of there. And my theater training was the thing that saved me. How many takes did it take? Fuck. Here we do. We did that seven times till we got it right. Seven takes. But we rehearsed for four days beforehand. That's a really fast. It's, so just to let you know, a play is rehearsed over a period of three or four weeks if it's an hour and a half. We got three or four days. So it was pretty hectic. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Sometimes, yep. Yeah. Yep. She said the only some actors in Pittsburgh only get a week. You guys are tough. 
Not as tough as we Michigan or LA people are, but it's pretty cool. Good on you. Um, yes. Anyone else? Uh, what about this fine fellow over here? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm a really huge fan of Dark Man, and Thank you. Um, I, I really liked your part in that. Thank you. you. Know, all of that. And I was just wondering if you had any um, any stories fr from that. That's and that's one. And I've heard. I don't. I don't know if if you or, or your brother have said it, but I know Liam Neeson said like when superhero, you know, when Marvel, like I mean Spider Man and everything, they kind of call that like that's like a precursor to a lot of like the big superhero movies. It didn't I get as much it, notice, but I, I mean it, it, it was. And I thought that when I saw it, I thought that was really just an original superhero type movie. So I was just wondering if there were any good stories that uh, you could share about uh, that. Yeah, that was like the first, I think, well, no, it wasn't the first big budget movie I did. Uh, it was the first sort of <clears throat> mainstream, no, it wasn't even the first mainstream Hollywood movie I did. It was just a movie I did, okay. So, um, but I, what I remember most about that movie was the late Larry Drake. Do you never know, anyone know who Larry Drake is? Yeah, he's kind of lost, a few people do, but his name is lost throughout uh, through history now. Larry was, he's uh, deceased now, uh, great guy, great actor. Larry w became very, very famous in the late 1980s. He was on a show called L.A. Law, which was at that time one of the most popular shows on television, like, what's that Kevin Costner Western freaking thing? Yeah. Like Yellowstone is now. It's like everyone would watch that damn thing. And Larry played a mentally challenged guy. And uh, there were, even from film critics around America, they said, how dare you put a man who cannot think well in a part? That is cruelty. They wanted the show canceled. They petitioned NBC because they thought they put a mentally challenged guy and didn't pay him anything, like just wandering around. That's how effective Larry Drake was. Larry Drake's one of the smartest people in the world. He is not mentally challenged, as it happens. Um, and um, Larry taught me on that set everything I needed to know that they never taught me in theater school. So Larry was like, okay, here's what you do between takes. Here's how you leave your trailer when you leave. This is how you treat the second assistant director. This is where you should be parking. And then all these things, like during those, you know, month and a half, he really was like a mentor that, you know, you pray that you get once in your life, you know? So that's what I remember most about it. He's also just a fucking great actor and I'm just sorry he's gone, you know? We're all lesser for it, no doubt about it. Any other questions? Yes, right down there. sir. Um, along with um, you being collaborator brother, I want to ask about another collaborator brother has the... 1973 Delta 88. Um, I was just wondering what the origins of that was and how, um, how that came to be in all your brother's movies. Shit, man, I don't know. I have no idea. You have to ask him. I just, I couldn't answer that. Um, I just know that that belonged to my dad. Then he gave it to my mom. <clears throat> you know, and once that was an old piece of shit, she gave it to my brother. That's how cars go in families. You know, there's really nothing that exciting about it. Um, I don't know why he's so attached to that car. He still is. I mean, it was ugly then. <laughs> right? I mean, it's like, it's one thing to be like, oh, I didn't really notice that, say, 1957 Plymouth Fury in 1957. Then you get to be like 1978, and you're like, wow, that's a cool car. But yeah, I remember being a little kid going, that is one ugly-ass car. Like, I really thought my dad had bought an ugly car. And uh, it's still ugly. It might be cool, just in like, you know, kind of like a headband, dope smoking, eagles listening kind of a way. But that's about it. <laughs> um, who else? Yes, you, miss. Yes. You were talking about uh, bad play earlier, and we were just what, wondering... What was I talking about? Bad, uh, play. bad play, how it just bad keeps play. going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were wondering if you have a favorite play that you've ever seen or been in or read. Oh my God, yeah, I love theater, man. I love it. Um, well, uh, I think my, not to be, oh my God, there's so many great plays, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, let's take drama. I mean, the one that I can watch over and over and over again, oh God, it's a lot of them, but all right. 
All right, so it's like asking me my favorite movie. It's just really hard to answer that question. So, uh, you know, honestly, and not to be, I'm not trying to sound like a, 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 some kind of Harvard douchebag here, but I Macbeth. When it's done well, it is the most magnetic play in the world. From start to finish, all two and a half hours of that thing, I am transfixed. When it, is, when it is done badly, it is like root canal and spinal tap at once. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Um, that. Um, I also really like um, Ghosts by Henrik Ibsen is amazing, just as far as classics are concerned. Just absolutely magnetic, like sucks you right in. Um, and then uh, I also, in like more modern sense, comedies, uh, though it's completely gone now and no one ever redoes it, one of the greatest theatrical comedies I've written is a play called The Foreigner by Larry Shu. And I doubt you'll ever get a chance to see it. They never made it into a movie. Shu never wanted the rights to go to film, so it's gone. But do read it. It's absolutely brilliant. So that's my favorite there. Uh, play, favorite one I ever saw? Um, God, did I see? Um, oh, I saw the playwright David Mamet, um, Oleana in New York, probably like, 1990, like greatest thing ever. And the damn thing was an hour and a half and it felt like a, literally five minutes. Like it was that good. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay, got time for one more question. You're going to be headed back to your table to sign after this? Yes, I will be okay. back at the table. Yes, to say hello to everybody and all that jive. So uh, we'll get your question. Have you ever taken anything off of any of the sets of movies or theater that you've done? Yeah, I'm a fucking thief. Of course I'll steal <laughs> and everything I can. You ought to check your wallet, man. That shit's <laughs> gone right now. Uh, no, I don't really take, no, I don't take things from sets, though I do always ask politely if, if it's a, I didn't used to do this, but now I ask the costume department and the production if I can have the costume. Because that's what I, you know, that's what I like to keep. That reminds me of stuff, you know. And sometimes now, now that I've gotten to be a more recognizable celebrity, um, <clears throat> I will ask for a, prop that I use, you know, because usually the director likes to keep the cool ones, you know, but um, like uh, in this movie I just did, Failure, um, that I star in, this indie drama thriller, the, the two most prominent props that I've got is this rather dour looking suit, which I kept, and a baseball bat, which I beat people to death with. <laughs> and so I kept both of those, but yeah, I keep those. Yeah, but otherwise, yeah, I'm generally a thief. That's true. No. Uh, who else has a question? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody? Oh, that was it. Was that uh, the only one? Well, I got one final question. Sure. How is it different working with your brother as a director than with other directors? There's a fairly similar uh, experience, or there is any kind of difference? Oh, no. It's, uh, well, it just depends on, uh, depends on uh, the director that, I, that I, I'm assigned to or work with or chosen to work with. Mm -hmm. Depends. Um, no, it's very nice. Uh, of course, my brother's, I think he's a very, very talented director. He's excellent with actors, so it's uh, quite a pleasure. Um, and I suppose the advantage is uh, because we grew up together, I know his tastes, I guess, perhaps a little better than other actors might. And so um, um, I will be able to guess with a reasonable amount of certainty whether he liked that take or didn't like that take. I'm sometimes wrong, of course, but so, uh, you know, sometimes if I do recall a few times we were shooting and I would finish something and I'd be like, let me do it again. And he'd be like, yeah. You know, as opposed to like, would you mind doing that again? So usually I know if, you know, if he, something he would, I think, appreciate. Well, thank you so much for coming thank out you. and doing this. Thanks for saying Ladies me, and gentlemen, appreciate it. Thank you know you. him, you love him. Awesome. Give it up for Ted yeah. Raimi. <laughs> Headed back to his table to do some signing. First Q&A of the day. Great job, everybody. Thank you, Ted. Hey everybody, this is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men. Listen, I'm a fan, I'm a fanboy, and when I need news, updates, and everything else on fandom, I go to Fandom Spotlight. Remember everybody, follow your fandom and have fun.